did it when I was standing over there. It's all good. Good morning, church. How are you? It's a beautiful Sunday morning. I love that. We're going to stand. We're going to worship the Lord this morning together. It's good to see some new faces. I haven't met you, so make sure you stop and say hi. I'd love to get to know each and every one of you as the bell tolls. Here we go. Before the world was made, before you spoke it to me, you were the king of kings. Yeah, you were, yeah, you were, and now you're reigning still, enthroned above all things. Angels and saints cry out, we join them as we sing, glory to God, glory to God. Lift it up. Glory to God forever, and glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever, yeah. God, you gave me breath so I could praise your great and matchless name. All my days, all my days, so let my whole life be a blazing offering, a life that shouts and sings the greatness of our King. Glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God forever. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God forever. Yeah. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. All for you and for your glory, take my life, let it be yours. We'll sing glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Ascribe to the Lord, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Glory to God. Forever, take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. Take my life and let it be all for you and for your glory. Take my life and let it be yours. We'll sing glory to God. Glory to God, glory to God forever. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God forever. Yeah. Glory to God forever and praise his name. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Well, good morning, New Hope Fellowship. It's good to see a number of new faces here. Uh, some of the snowbirds are starting to come back. I see, I see Jeannie there. And also with spring and with hopefully the virus subsiding, eventually things will kind of, will kind of move into some new, into a new chapter as well. I want to con congratulate Chuck. Is Chuck here today? There he is. Uh, we had a wonderful wedding here on Thursday, and Chuck gave away his daughter and said some great words as Brad and Joan A. got married. And uh, 
pledged their vows to each other. So that was a great celebration. There were three little girls that were the flower girls. We were just overwhelmed with cuteness, if you can imagine that. I don't normally talk like that, but it was just so overwhelming that it was, it was incredible. Also, in your bulletin, you'll notice there's a number of things going on. Sunday school is still happening. Uh, the May Day events and Bible studies as we continue to be nurtured in our faith. I want to invite Jack to come up as well. Uh, has an announcement as well regarding uh, right to life, I believe. So, Brother Jack. Good morning, friends. I want to first advertise the life chain that was canceled this last uh, fall, but on May 2nd, that's uh, first Sunday of May, the day after the May Day celebrations here, from 2.30 to 3.30 at the corner of West Nedge and Millam in Portage, there'll be a life chain. It, they do that every year and uh, mainly you stand out there with uh, posters and smiles and people either honk their horns and give you a thumbs up or <laughs> something not so pleasant happens as they drive by, depending on their point of view. Uh, Tim was there last time. We had a couple folks from the church there the last time, and that was that was good turnout for us. So I'll uh, make that information available. The, the other things related to uh, sanctity of life issues, I'm going to take a, just a moment to describe a few of those. I think uh, we ought to know that uh, there's been a real change in the way our government is uh, behaving with regard to right to life issues and. And uh, uh, many of us uh, who have voted in the last election have buyer's remorse for what has occurred. Uh, and, and some of it is, is, is pretty stark. The, uh, the use of human tissue in biomedical research continues to go on despite the fact that it's illegal. Um, they, they are using human uh, fetal tissue to create humanized mice to uh, uh, make those mice more like humans so that they can study different conditions. Some people would argue that uh, the end result uh, justifies the means, um, but none of those individuals, those human beings that donated that tissue gave permission to have that done. And uh, the Food and Drug Administration continues, uh, the National Institutes of Health continues to give money to organizations that harvest fetal tissue for use in biomedical research. That's your tax dollars, folks, that are being used. And if you don't believe that's appropriate, um, you may be funding it even though you, you don't want to. Uh, the Hyde Amendment, which uh, forbade the use of our tax dollars in most most research, uh, excuse me, in most abortions in the United States is, is, is going to be turned down. The Mexican Treaty, uh, the Mexican City Treaty uh, has been nullified by a stroke of the pen by our president, which means that your tax dollars are not being going, are not going to uh, 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 NGOs, uh, non-governmental organizations overseas to, to fund abortions. So we're paying for those too. Um, the uh, Kalamazoo County Board just last week voted to give money to the YWCA in Kalamazoo for abortion services uh, uh, that are uh, uh, sponsored by Planned Parenthood. Um, if you live in Kalamazoo County, then your tax dollars are being used to subsidize those operations too. The Van Buren County uh, Right to Life is not a real big organization, but they exist. And uh, I have information if you want to contact them. Kalamazoo Right to Life is another real uh, a strong organization in our state. And then Right to Life Michigan is uh, a really, uh, really good organization. They, the, other, the, the last thing I, I wanted to advertise is a bulletin that I've uh, a brochure I put out in the out in the narthex there that Right to Life Michigan uh, has put together on uh, life, death, and dignity, uh, and the subtitle is Medical Decision Making Guide. Uh, if that is something that uh, you need or interests you, I'm going to close with a.
passage from Matthew 13, uh, Matthew 19, verse 13 and 14. <clears throat> then the little children were brought to Jesus for him to place his hands on them and pray for them. But the disciples rebuked those who brought them. Jesus said, let the little children come to me and do not hinder them. For the kingdom of heaven belongs to such as these. You can interpret that however you like. Thanks. Thank you, Jack. I also want to mention a book that we have that we uh, bought a number of copies for, for the church family to read. It's by a guy named Francis Chan. Not many, pe- not many men have that name Francis anymore, do they? But Francis Chan is just a fantastic uh, man of God. And he wrote this book called Letters to the Church. And he, I would consider him a prophetic voice uh, in our time, whether you agree with everything he says or not. He's really good at, I think, helping us snap back to just remembering who we are as the church. And so I thought it'd be good if we read this together uh, just to help get us talking as well and help bring us together as a church. And as we move forward, to just try to be on the same page on things. And and, uh, in coming weeks, I want to wait till uh, all the Florida people get back as well, but I think we'll have some uh, congregational discussion time as well, maybe some Sunday evenings where we'll get together in in discussions groups and talk about some of the things that he says. So we just want to offer you that book. Uh, There's a study guide that goes with it as well. And I believe it's worthy of us uh, looking at it together as a church. And lastly, uh, just to let you know that one of our own, uh, Don Williams, has entered the promised land. Uh, Seven o'clock this morning. Uh, she sat right th- back there next to Jean. You might not have known her, but there in the back. And she'd recently, in the last year or so, she'd started coming to the prayer meeting, some of the Bible studies that we had. I got to know her. She had a great testimony. In, in, in recent years, was, was coming back uh, to God, you might say, and it was really getting right with God. And I really enjoyed getting to know her. She had a heart attack last week. And... The daughter had to, pull, uh, had to pull the plug. Aren't we glad that when we have to get our plug pulled, that it doesn't affect God's promises for us? That we go and we know that she has crossed the Jordan and that she's with God and we have that hope. As hard as it is to say goodbye to people we love, but to me it's just a reminder. You know, every day is a gift. And we'll miss having Dawn here as part of the church family. But what a privilege it has been that she came here, was getting restored in her faith, and so we'll continue to pray for her family. Let's pray together as we continue to worship God this morning. Father, we thank you today for the gift of life, and just acknowledge that you, you made us, you give us our time on the earth, and that you give us new life spiritually as well, <clears throat> and that time stretches into eternity. And I thank you for this church family that you've placed here, and I just pray that you'd bless us now as we gather together to speak to you and to speak to each other, that you'd make this just a a special time for each one of us. Just bless us now, we pray. Draw us to yourself. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So I get up here every Sunday and uh, we worship together and that's awesome. A lot of people don't know who I am. So I'm going to take just a couple of minutes each Sunday and kind of tell you my story because uh, my story comes from uh, 23 different countries, three different languages, uh, adopted, in Christ, fell away for years and years, um, and then came back. So my story is Satan did but God. And a lot of people have these stories of Satan did, but God, but you don't actually get to hear them for what they are. So we're going to start from the very beginning. And today, uh, it starts before my parents. Uh, my grandparents, I am fourth generation mission uh, kid. My great grandparents started the first church in the Belgian Congo, uh, the Browers, obviously Dutch. Um, 
And they were very Dutch. They were very stubborn. They didn't quit. They kept being missionaries. And their kids, my grandfather, uh, he wrote a book, and he, he's in the Belgian Congo. And uh, uh, you hear stories about miracles and things like that. He saw an angel one time. This is a cool story. He was, uh, his son had malaria, and he was trying to get to his son in another village. And over there, there's no roads or anything like that. This is Belgian Congo. This is way back. Well, not way back. I guess the 40s and 50s. But uh, he's back there. I can't really say that's really way back because when you hear how old I am, you're like, really? Um, but so he was trying to get to his son. And my grandfather was a man of faith to an extreme this guy would walk into a village knowing there's cannibals, and they'd all bow down to him because they thought he was a god. They had never seen a white person before in their life. And so they thought he was god, and they would, they would bow down to worship him because they thought that he was god. And he would take that to his own advantage and say, I'm not god, but god. So here he is heading towards uh, the village, and the monsoons had came, and the only bridge in town was washed out. So what is he going to do to get the medicine over to his son? He couldn't obviously do anything. He was trying to ride a bike through the jungle, and I don't know how he decided to do that, but like I was saying, he's Dutch and he's very stubborn. So riding a bike through the jungle, if you will, he's trying to get over. And there's this, uh, this gentleman, African gentleman, wearing white. Comes over, doesn't speak a thing to my grandfather, and my grandfather stands there just stiff because he's there's cannibals. He thought he was going to destroy him. He grabs my grandfather and picks him up, walks him over this log that is impassable, and drops him on the ground. Goes back over, picks up a bike, walks him over, and drops him on the ground, and then goes into the forest, and that was it. Next few weeks, my grandfather wanted to thank the man, went to all of the villages. It was horrible out. They had sent nobody out. Nobody. Yeah, an angel. It's the only explanation that was. We see angels every day, but they come in different forms. Keep your eyes open to that. So, like I was saying, Satan but God. Satan didn't want my... Satan definitely didn't want my grandfather to get over that log at all. God's more powerful than that. It's really cool. Satan's really powerful. He is. Don't deny it. He is. But God is more powerful. Amen. So as, as I get into my story, I'm going to start just there. My, uh, my, the Rutherford family on my dad's side, um, he was the last of his line. Um, they uh, were in Decatur, Michigan. They were Ethiopia. So they were Ethiopian missionaries. My father was born in Ethiopia. My mother was born in the Belgian Congo. And no, the families did not know each other. And yet they found each other because it's such a small world. And God knows it's such a small world and we live on this tiny little speck. And yet God knows every hair on our head. All right. Imagine yourself at being that small. I found out about these little creatures that live inside of your eyelash. Did you know there's a little creature that lives in there? It comes out only at night. And then it goes back in. He doesn't know of your existence. Man, he's so small. And yet, he knows that he lives on this, this plane, right? And you, because you breathe and because God allows you to breathe... God allows you to take the breath you're taking right now. He could just say, no more. No more, come home. Doesn't happen, people. Today is the last day, and it could be the last day, and live it that way, and every breath you take, because that breath was given to you by God. We're going to read the word before we get into worship here. And, um, yeah, I think this is, this is how we should live our life. In Psalm 118, I'm a worship guy, I love the Psalms, so we're going to get to Psalm 118. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, and his steadfast love endures forever. Let Israel say his steadfast love endures forever. 
Let the house of Aaron say his steadfast love endures forever. And let those who fear the Lord say his steadfast love endures forever. For those who know God, he is a beautiful God, and his steadfast love endures forever. For those who don't know God, he is a terrifying God, but his steadfast love endures forever. And beyond that, amen, let's stand and worship the Lord. Greater is the one who's in us. Greater is the one who calls our name and he will never fail. Stronger is the one within us. Stronger is the one who fights for us. He will never fail, and you will never fail. For your love endures forever, and oh, your love endures forever. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light, your love endures forever yeah we sing mighty mighty is the one who's in us mighty is the one who's strong to save he will make a way make a way for your love endures forever and oh your love endures forever open up our eyes surround us with your light your love endures forever I got it God is fighting for us all. Our God is fighting for us always. We are not alone. We are not alone. Our God is fighting for us. Open up our eyes, surround us with your light, your love endures forever. And our God, our God is fighting for us always. Our God is fighting for us all. Our God is fighting for us all. Praise God, we're not alone.
kind of read the word while we're uh, learning these songs. And I put this on Facebook so other people could get ready. So hopefully you, if you're on Facebook, check it out. We're going to start doing this and putting the verse to what we're doing on, on Facebook. So, um, in the beginning was the word and the word was God and he was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him and without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and the life was the light of men and the light shines in the darkness and all the darkness has not overcome it. The word of God is light in my darkness Hope for the hopeless, strong and true The word of God is strength for the weary a shield for those who trust in you. A shield for those who trust in you. And everything will fade. Yes, everything will fade. The heavens and the earth will pass away. But you will remain. Yes, you will remain always. Sing this together. The word of God is light in my darkness. Hope for the hopeless, strong and true. The word of God is strength for the weary. A shield for those who trust in you. A shield for those who trust in you. Everything will fail. You 
the word of God will not fail us. Please be seated. Good morning. So I have to tell you, Monday was one of my favorite days of the whole year so far. Because I, I was watching the news and the lady said, tonight you might be able to open your windows. Oh, yes. I was so excited and Bill's rolling his eyes because he knows that means that's going to happen. And so I went in the bedroom and he has the door cracked to the outside like this much. No, no. That's not open your windows. So I shut that measly little bit open door and I flung them open because we live in the woods where there's water and the peepers were making a ruckus. They were so loud and I was so excited. The joyful noise was over the top. I didn't sleep much because I was just so happy. I was just so happy, wasn't I, Bill? He's like so cold, but that's okay. I was so happy. I have a friend that lives in town and she said, how do you sleep with that noise? That's not noise. That's, that's just beautiful. That's beautiful. Psalm 98, 4 says, shout for, joy, shout for joy to the Lord, all the earth. Burst into jubilant song with music. Make music to the Lord with the harp. And with the harp and the sound of singing, with trumpets and the blast of the ram's horn, shout for joy before the Lord, the King. Let the sea resound and everything in it the world and all who live in it. Let the rivers clap their hands. Let the mountains sing together for joy. Let them sing before the Lord, for he comes to judge the world, or he comes to judge the earth. He will judge the world in righteousness and the peoples with equity. He takes care of us. He is wonderful. And we are to sing with joy. We are to be joyful. I will tell you that I think, just like I'm happy to hear the wildlife, I think the Lord loves it when he comes in to the church and he sees the doors open and he sees us come in and listen to us. Are we just giddy? They have to have that bell out there to tell us it's time to come in because we would be there till tonight because we love each other. When our ladies group comes on Tuesdays, we do this. I think the Lord loves to hear our joy, don't you? He loves to hear us talk and think of what heaven's going to be like. Oh, the noise. Better than the peepers. Better than the peepers as we raise our joyful, joyful noise to the Lord. And then we sing and we lift up our prayers to him. And I think he loves it all. We're going to go to the Lord and make him happy to hear our voices as we, as we pray to him for the things that are on our hearts today. Dear Heavenly Father, I just bring before you these prayers of concern to you, Heavenly Father, who is most glorious and sits on the throne. And you made us, Lord, and I know that you love us. We know you died for us. We know that your love is so complete and awesome and we can't even begin to understand how much you love and care for us. And Lord, I know it brings you joy when you hear us come to you, when you hear us sing, when you hear us gather. In your heavenly name, Lord, I know that brings you joy. Lord, today we bring to you our concerns. We lift these people up to you, Lord. I pray for the family of Dawn Williams, Lord. I know that you are holding her in your heavenly arms and all is good with Dawn. Please let it all be good with her family, Lord. Give them peace in knowing that she is with you. I pray for Jenny Brandt, Lord. I give you thanks that she is doing better. I pray that her therapy goes well at home and they're able to come from California back to be with us because we miss her and will, Lord. I thank you for her doing better. I pray for um, the Reisner children who were struck by a car, Lord. I just pray for Landon, that you will work a miracle in him. I pray for Sharon Lovely, for Karen, for Brad, and Alexa Brad Alexander and um, Janae, for Chris, Rachel, Jim Metzger, Tonya Spears, Ken Ratzleff, Heidi, Jan Van Vleck's friend, for Heather, for Marilee Corwin, Cindy Behrman, Todd Skogan, Gary Myers, Heather Ward, Joyce Butcher, Joyce Harris, Chuck Hansen, Chuck Kuiper. 
in Lord the Ward family that you just lift them up and you give the Ward strength to be awesome grandparents and enjoy and treasure every moment that they have with these little ones. In your precious Lord, I pray all these things and lift them up to you, Lord, in your precious and most holy name. Amen. Last week we celebrated Easter and the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. It's kind of like a new year, isn't it? Now really, we should, uh, instead of having January 1st be New Year's, we should have the day after Easter be the new year. And I just want to kind of keep this, keep this thought going as well for a couple of weeks as well. Just as we launch into the life, you know, launch forward with the life that God has for us. And uh, really to live by faith, hope, and ultimately love. That's what God has for us in a fallen world, which can drag us down. I just hope that we really do find out what this, you know, really experience this new life that God has for us. A couple of days ago, I got a message uh, from someone not part of this church family, uh, knew from the past. He said this, he said, I'm starting to find Christianity again, letting God and Jesus back into my heart. When can I call myself a Christian again? Anything else that I must do? That's a great question, isn't it? Of course, the, you know, the quick answer is, well, not really. You know, when God calls us, the gospel is so simple, yet so profound and so deep. You know, Jesus calls us to follow him. But yet the commitment to him is absolute. And to commit ourselves by faith. And so we become saved by grace through faith. And we become the children of God. And then we spend the rest of our lives learning what that means to be a follower of Jesus. Because initially we don't know a whole lot, do we? But then we spend our days, we learn and we deepen in our faith. I've often thought that when you accept Christ, there should be like fireworks should go off. You know, confetti should go everywhere. And sometimes it seems like. You open your eyes after, and like, well, everything kind of feels the same. You know, in this earth, it's not like, but the spiritual reality of what happens, the Bible tells us, by faith, we know that we're born again, that everything really is different. Just like the resurrection of Christ changes everything. That we have, When we have faith, it does. It changes everything. And this faith happens in the secret place of our heart. And so we are. We're, we're God's people. Or the followers of Jesus. The scripture I want to look at today is Matthew chapter 5, verses 13 through 16, which really just reminds us who we are as the followers of Jesus in this incredible, important purpose that he's given us upon this earth. And so, Matthew 5, verse 13 through 16, he says, You are the salt of the earth. But if the salt loses its saltiness, how can it be made salty again? It's no longer good for anything except to be thrown out and trampled by men. You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. When we, we become a follower of Jesus, we take on this, this, this purpose becomes our life where we are salt and we are light. It doesn't say we're supposed to be salt and light. It doesn't say try to be salt and light. It says we are. That's who we are. That becomes our identity as salt and as light. That we now represent Jesus in the world. And that we are to reflect his very character. We all want to be cool, don't we? We all want to have significant lives. And I think as you watch advertising, the culture around us, it's very big on, on people being cool. And once in a while, I feel like I'd like to be cool too. And one of my goals was to learn how to moonwalk. How many of you can moonwalk? That's, of course, what Michael Jackson is. It's when you go like this. 
Now, I just want to say thank you to those who really believed I was going to do it, okay? <laughs> <laughs> thank you for trusting in me to that. It's really, really hard to moonwalk, and I haven't figured it out yet. Michael Jackson makes it look easy, and there are guys like, I think, man, I want to be able to moonwalk. That would really be cool. Still one of my goals. I'm going to get there. But what we have to realize is that as a people of God, we have this incredible purpose and meaning in our life where we are. We suddenly, just by virtue of being God's people, we suddenly are salt and light in the world. That God begins to work in us and through us to have an impact on the society around us. It's who we are. The Apostle Paul says it this way, in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 20, where he refers to us as the ambassadors uh, for Christ. We went over this in our men's Bible study. I'm going to read verses 17 through 20. He says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. That's who we are when we, when we get saved. We're a new, a new creature. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. What a great presentation of the gospel. And he says this, and he has committed to us the, the message of reconciliation. We are therefore God's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. So that's who we are. As followers of Jesus, we become the ambassadors for Christ. And our focus of our life becomes inherently outward. Where we are working on our lives, we're maturing and we're developing. But it always carries this purpose that we're giving it away. And that we're blessing, blessing people and that we're influencing people, and we're salt and light, and somehow we're now being used to make a difference in, in people's lives. In men's Bible study, we just looked at 2 Corinthians chapter 9, where the Apostle Paul talks about giving. We talked about that. And thanks be to God for his indescribable gift of Christ, and just how God himself is just the God who gives, and it's our time and our money, our gift, just everything about our life is that we're to be a people that that give. And we have a wonderful time in our men's Bible study. Just put a quick plug in, in, in for it there. Uh, just reflecting, discussing, following rabbit trails, you know, studying the Bible. How do we do that? You know, how do we, how do we become the salt in the light of the world? I think very simply, it's by what we say. It's by what we do. It's how we live. Because what we are doing as the followers of Christ is as we study the Bible, we're learning from Jesus and, and we're looking to live like he does. I mean, look through the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5 through 7. It says to love your enemies. How incredible is that? Do you, I mean, do you, do you see any group of people out there? Yeah, we're going to love our enemies. Man, that, that's radical. That's, that's us as the followers of Christ. That's not the normal path of the world. As you read through the Sermon on the Mount, all the different ways that you have to just scratch your head, that you know the way of Jesus is a different way. We're not judging other people, because we know that we'll be judged by the same, same standard that we put on other people. You know, don't judge. We're not to get angry, call people fools. We're to, well, this is a hard one, turn the other cheek. How often do we want to do that? We're to give, we're to pray, we're to be faithful. Just As we go through the Sermon on the Mount, we realize, man, what a different life it is. That's what it means to be salt and light. You know, the truth is that we have, we really have no power, do we? All we have is influence. We really don't have power to make anybody do anything. It's kind of like parenting. At what age... At what age did you find that you could no longer control your children and you realized that it was more like now you were trying to influence them? Was it, what, 21? <laughs> 13? I still try. I still ground faith occasionally. I tell her, you're grounded. 
doesn't work. You know, as our kids get older, it, yeah, we don't have the power anymore. And again, not to, not to use that metaphor completely, but it's true with our influence in the world. It's not about power. That's the ways of the world. It's about influence. And it's how we live, how we speak, how we treat each other. I think we're becoming more, and I've said this before, but I think as a church, we're becoming more and more a counterculture, an alternative to the culture around us. I think uh, American culture was deeply influenced by Christianity. So back maybe in the, for those who remember, even the 60s, I mean, most people went to church and Christian mores were kind of accepted and everybody, you know, it, it wasn't the, the kind of incredible cultural decline that we see now. So now for us to actually have uh, the standards of Jesus and to try to live like Christ, man, we are the, ra we are the radicals. You know, we're, we're a counterculture. But that is, that is our influence. And that's how God is using us as he blesses the world through us. We are in the world, but not of the world. And that's, and that's the line that we walk. And I think that it's probably easier, and we probably wish we had the power, don't we? Wouldn't it be nice just to have the power? Just, it's the harder path to actually just honor God and to live, no matter what other people do, but to live and do what God has called us to do and to honor him. 1 John chapter 2, I'm going to read verses 15 through 17, talks about the world and our relationship to it. He says, do not love the world or anything in the world. If any, anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For everything in the world, the cravings of sinful man, the lust of his eyes, and the boasting of what he has done, comes not from the Father, but from the world. The world and its desires pass away, but the man who does the will of God lives forever. It's the world that we live in, but yet that's the God that we're seeking to serve. So what is the win, in a sense, of being salt and light? What's the, what's the point of it all? The point is that people come to know God. That's what it says at the, at the end of that. If you look back at Matthew 5, the very end of that passage, it says, Let your light shine before men that they may see your good deeds. And what? And praise God. So the whole point is not that we're somehow... People are going to just think we're wonderful. Not just the people like us. It's kind of a fickle thing, isn't it? Because people, some people, probably, all of us probably have people that really like us. We all have people that really don't like us. I've only had a couple people that have always liked me. And they were both dogs. <laughs> the only people that always like us are man, our dogs. They just love us unconditionally. So we can somehow get by that, where we're just trying to be liked. You know, it's not the point that I'm going to be impress people, and I'm going to, people are really going to think I'm spiritual, and they're going to like me. No. It's somehow that people, as, as we live, that their thoughts are redirected to think, wow, God really is uh, incredible. And they begin finding themselves praising God, to be impressed with God, not just with us. And, and it's incredible God's heart because God really does want to reach people through us. And that's how he uses us, as salt in the light of the earth. I want to read a passage here in Luke chapter 15. Just because it, it gives us a picture of the heart of God. I'm going to read Luke 15 verses 1 through 7. I want you to pay attention to who's rejoicing. In this passage, it says, Now the tax collectors and the sinners were all gathering around to hear Jesus, but the Pharisees and the teachers of the law, the religious people, muttered, This man welcomes sinners, and he eats with them. And then Jesus told them this parable. Suppose one of you has a hundred sheep and loses one of them. Does he not lead the ninety-nine in the open country and go after the lost sheep till he finds it? And when he finds it, he joyfully puts it on his shoulders and goes home. And then he calls his friends and neighbors together and says, Rejoice with me, I have found my lost sheep. And I tell you that in the same way there is more rejoicing in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous 
persons who think they don't need to repent. The image there is God himself rejoicing. Or God himself celebrates when people are reconciled to him, in, when they are restored to him. Now, I've often thought, well, why doesn't God just zap people? Why didn't he just zap people? That's not how he set up the universe. He gave us this incredible and awful freedom that we can reject God. And so God, because of that God, in a sense, he suffers with us and he calls us to himself. But we have to take those steps. And then through us, he is reconciling the word to himself. But that's the heart of God. It's just the, the joy that he experiences when we're restored to him. And so the challenge for us today is to be who God made us to be and who we are, to be salt and light of the earth. And the Apostle Peter says it this way, to go at 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 through 12. So we've looked at the words of Jesus, the words of Paul, and then we, we hear what Peter says. In verses 9 through 12, he says, But you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. Why? For what purpose? That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. Once you had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So, dear friends, I urge you as aliens and strangers in the world to abstain from sinful desires which war against the soul. And that's that strong current of the world that would suck us in. But live such good lives among the pagans that though they accuse you of doing wrong, they may see your good deeds and do what? See your good deeds, not glorify you, but see your good deeds and glorify God on the day that he visits us, to come to know God. And that is the win. And that's the end point as we worship God, that people would somehow see him in us and through us. Because we're looking to be like Jesus, because we're following his teaching, we're turning the other cheek. We're actually loving our enemies. We're not taking revenge on people. You know, we're, we're being careful what we say about people. We're actually giving secretly, you know, but we're actually helping, you know, we're actually doing good deeds. And we're not, and people, people just say, 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 wow. We've probably all failed. Using the word probably is pretty gracious there, isn't it? We certainly all failed as individuals and as a church. And you know why we fail? Because we set the bar really high. Let's keep setting the bar really high. For, I remember uh, I think John Maxwell, I think he said, if you're, not, if you're not failing, you're not doing enough. You're not doing anything. Not that I want to fail, but let's set that bar where it belongs. And we're going to try to be like Jesus. And man, we're, gonna, you know, we're probably going to fail on a regular basis. And there's no better day than today to commit ourselves, or maybe to recommit ourselves, to say, you know, I'm, I'm going to read the Gospels. I'm going to find out how Jesus called me to live. And I'm, I'm going to seek to be a good steward. I'm going to be faithful to serve God and be the salt and light to people around me. I can't control them. I can't make anybody do anything. I can't change the world by power. But I could follow the teaching of Jesus, and I can be salt and light in this world. God help me to do that. There's no better day than today to make a decision. I just invite you in the quietness of your own heart to have, if you, you need to have a few words with God today, and you need to realize that, that, yeah, you need to recommit yourself to that. I just invite you to do that right now. And just pray in the quietness of your own heart. You know, Jesus came to this earth, lived a righteous life in our place, died on the cross for our sins that we might live so we can just plunge ahead and follow after him. And then he rose from the dead for, so that we can, we can live. We know our salvation is taken care of. May God help us to, live, to just have that joy of our salvation and then to be the salt and the light in our community. My hope is in my own life that I get, get ever better at that. My hope is that here at New Hope, we'll find ourselves, when people see us, they just think, man, God, God, God is amazing. We find ourselves being able to influence people, not by power, but by our influence and by through the Holy Spirit, that we're able to do that as we launch into the new year here 
May God help us toward that end. Let's pray together. Father, we do thank you so much for the gift of life and for just the meaning and purpose that you give us, that we, we are the salt in the, of the world, the, the light, the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That's who we are. Pray you'd help us to know that and to just find great joy in, in serving you in that way. And we, we'll leave the results to you. Just help us, Father, to be faithful in that way. We just thank you for the, for the gift of spiritual life and reconciliation to you. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's stand and worship. Good. 
good father it's who you are it's who you are it's who you are and I'm loved by you it's who I am it's who I am it's who I am, who I am. you are faithful in all of your ways you are One more time, you are faithful. You are faithful in all of your ways. You are faithful in all of your ways. You are faithful in all of your ways to who are. One more time, I'm going to sing that. Your good, good Father, it's who you are, it's who you are, it's who you are, and I'm loved by you. It's who I am, it's who I am, it's who I am. Amen. If you're here today and you'd like to have an elder pray with you, you'd like to be prayed over, don't, don't leave today without uh, taking that moment to, to do that. We count it an honor to be able to pray with you. I know Bob and Dane and, and Jeff will, be up, will linger for a while here. We count it a great privilege if there's a special need in your life or you just, you just want to be prayed with or to be prayed over. Uh, don't leave today without taking a moment to do that. And we just love to be able to do that. So. Let's pray together. Father, again, we thank you for drawing us together and just helping us to think about you and important things today as we, through singing, through the preaching of the word, and through prayer. And as we go from this place, I pray you would, uh, through the power of your Holy Spirit, help us to be salt and light to those around us. Make us a blessing today, we pray. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.